Yorkshire. 23 minutes past eight. Near the end of the Second World War, Allied soldiers swept across Germany and occupied territories and liberated the concentration camps. A team of British filmmakers were sent out to document the horror. They were to make a film which would be seen by the Germans. The director, Alfred Hitchcock. The film was never completed, but now a documentary about it is being released. Night Will Fall. It features some of that original footage, uh, as well as recent interviews with some of those who were there. Here's survivor Manya Salinger describing the liberation of Bergen-Belsen. I looked at the tower, and the tower was empty. And there was always a German there with a shotgun or, or which whatever he had. And I started screaming. The Germans are going, I don't see any Germans. And some girls ran with me and we made it to the gate. And I am behind the barbed wire fence to witness the first British troop entering the camp. Well, the producer of the film, uh, Night Will Fall, as I say, is Sally Angel. She's with us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Just tell us about the uh, the story of the original film, the Hitchcock documentary. What happened to it? Well, the film itself <clears throat> was never completed uh, in, the, in 1945. It was stopped. But it has now been completed by the Imperial War Museum and digitally remastered. Um, the film was begun by a team of uh, British filmmakers and cameramen who went in to liberate the camps um, and was shot by cameramen who were just ordinary people uh, who had not uh, any awareness of what they were going to go into. So we're not talking professional cameramen here at all. We're talking perhaps soldiers or others who... Or or are we? Ordinary men who had been trained to use cameras to go into the camps, yes. Mm -hmm. And were were the filmmakers flown out when, it, when the, the first soldiers in realised how bad the situation was? Did they, did they say, look, we need to get some people here who can document all of this? Was that what happened? The, the cameramen were accompanying uh, the army. Right. They were part of the unit that went in, but nobody had prepared them for what they were going to see. And so how did Alfred Hitchcock become involved? Alfred Hitchcock was credited as being the supervising director. He was uh, asked to be part of the team by Sidney Bernstein, who was the producer and working for psychological warfare department of the British government and uh, Bernstein brought Hitchcock in to help tie the footage together to work out a way in which the footage could be put across in a way that would make it undeniable. Mm, Yeah because they didn't want at any point anyone to say oh you faked this or you made it up or you've uh, you've reenacted it And, and why was the film not completed at the time? Um, There were a variety of reasons it wasn't completed. Um, First of all, the Bernstein team was beset by problems in terms of lack of resources and delays in footage. They were trying to have a comprehensive amount of footage from American troops and Russian troops as well as British troops. And uh, then the political climate changed and the British decided they no longer needed an atrocity film to show to the German people. Uh, instead, they wanted to rebuild relationships with Germany. Right, so the agenda of trying to yeah, make a big deal of it was sort of passed by. Look, um, Sally, we can bring in now one of the characters who I know you traced and have put into the film, former Lieutenant Colonel Leonard Burney, who was one of the first British soldiers to enter Belsen Bergen. Uh, hello there, Leonard. Yes, I'm here. Um, well, just it must have had such a big impact on you when you walked in there. Well, it certainly did. Um, we'd been um, in Germany fighting the Germans and uh, for, for many months, and we'd seen uh, casualties and we'd seen civilian people injured, but we'd never, ever seen anything like we saw when we walked into Belsen concentration camp. It was a, a question of shock and horror, and uh, really the, the, we... For, for, to start with, really didn't know what to do. It was in Dante's Inferno. Mm. And were you in any way prepared for that? We, I suppose you'd known there were concentration camps of some kind, but you, you had no kind of inkling, I suppose, as how bad they were. No, we, this Belsen was the first concentration camp that the British Army had liberated. The Russians had liberated some on, on the east, but on the west, this was the first one. Now, we had liberated some prisoner of war camps where there were soldiers, the prisoners of the Germans, and uh, the, the, they'd uh, looked after the prisoners fairly, the, prisoners of war fairly well um, they were short of food everybody in Germany was short of food but they weren't maltreated and we 
you kind of expected that what we were going to see was something like that, but of course it was nothing like that at all. Your immediate instinct, I would think, was to just help the people in there, but it, I mean, probably a lot of people in there, and a, uh, an enormous amount of help needed. Well, it was absolutely overwhelming. I mean, when we got there, we were told there were 60,000 people in that camp, of which 10,000 were already dead and lying about, as we could see, in piles. And um, we, you know, as soldiers, we, we just arrived. We knew what fighting the enemy was, but to, how do you deal with this? We really, really didn't know what to do. The situation was saved, in fact, by the chief medical officer who'd, who'd arrived and organised everything. And from that, mo that moment on, we, we, uh, we, we did a good job, I think. But the initial shock was, was absolutely overwhelming. And were the people there? They must have been very glad to see the Germans away and to see rescue in hand. Well, uh, many of them are so far gone that they really didn't know what was going on. They, well, uh, a lot of them were near death and uh, uh, it didn't register. To a lot of them, of course, it did register. But um, they, they, there, wasn't, there wasn't any question of uh, they could really walk out and, and go away and sort of get on with their lives because in the middle of Germany, the end of the war, the war was still going on, of course. And um, we had to keep the people there because the great problem was typhus. And the camp was riddled with typhus. And the whole point was to stop people with typhus circulating amongst the German population and, and the British Army and the German Army, for that matter. And that's why we took the camp over by arrangement with the Germans, that we would, we would take the camp over and keep the people there and not let them wander all over Germany. Mm. Leonard, thanks for your testimony this morning. Thank you very much indeed. And Sally, that Alfred Hitchcock, as you say, was very keen that no one could deny. And so he, he did these very long panning shots, as I understand it, that would, in a sense, demonstrate this is just simple... Exactly. Show so, you what it is. And Sidney Bernstein as well insisted that they had long panning shots with local dignitaries and burgomeisters there, so it would never be denied. Sally, thank you very much, and uh, Leonard Burney too. Thanks both very much. It's half past eight. Uh,